three, two, one. This is not a single fork, just another podcast about food and cooking. And I'm Candace. And I'm Italian. And we're going to talk some more about kitchen tools. Yes, we found another article. Yet Imagine another. That. Yet There's another. So many articles about this shit. And we feel that we need to curate for you. So we're going to tell you all the things that we find that we think could be helpful to you. Or not. Or not. You know, sometimes we just kind of go off and who cares? Okay, this one's called 17 of Our Favorite Kitchen Gear Upgrades. Once more from Serious Eats. They have lots of good information. I think you'll like it. And some of these may overlap with the other uh, episodes. We did one on just basic kitchen gadgets. Ga- or, well, tools, uh, tools. Tools, essential tools. Yeah. So there is some overlap, but okay, whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand why, but okay. So this says uh, thermopop thermometer. Oh, that's just an instant read thermometer. I think that's very important. I do too. I do too. Guys, look, like, not guys, but maybe guys. People. Like, I know you want hey, to people. do the whole, like, no, oh, no. it feels like, I mean, look, trained professionals can do that because they're used to cooking. And we don't even 700 do fucking steaks a day. We still don't even do that. But you don't do that because the last thing you want is someone to get a raw piece of chicken or overcook It's only steak really for steaks. Or, you know, whatever. And then there's all these people, but there's all these people at home that cook it, that cut into their meat to check if it's done. Yeah. And while you can, you know, if you just do a little bitty teeny one and you look, okay, but most people don't do that. They want want to cut right down through the center. And what happens? And all the juices pour out and then you have a dry, uh, flavorless piece of meat. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't do that. Get a thermometer. They're not expensive. Well, they can be. Yeah, but but they don't have to be. They don't have to be. And then if you need a little cheat sheet, like print off a little cheat sheet and put it on the inside of one of your cabinets to know like when is steak cooked and chicken and pork and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, because some people just can't remember. I mean, be, and there is a lot. I mean, it do, it's not that there's overlap, but there's kind of overlap in the uh, temperature you, when you get in there. But chicken, 165. No lower than 165. I don't care what anybody says. Not 145? Not one, no medium rare chicken. No, no, don't do it. You'll tell them. (laughs) I just did. No. 165 staying alive. Tell them what happened. Oh, okay. That, that part. Yeah. So we had a, and in fact, he's coming back. Oh, why? I don't know, but he is to a pasta class. I'm really afraid. He's a very opinionated participant in our classes and that's fine. We're okay. We want people to tell us what they think about things, but his content, he wouldn't. Okay. We were doing a chick, we were doing a chicken and we cooked it to 165 and his contention was it was overdone at 165, that it should be cooked to 140, 145. No. And his partner who actually is someone who comes to a lot of our classes was I felt really bad for her, frankly. <laughs> she was mortified. They did not eat 145 chicken. They ate no, 165 no. chicken, but he was He pissed. wouldn't eat it. He, took he didn't it. eat it. You're he right. He did not eat it. He took no. it home for his dogs. Yeah, or something. So, and that's fine. great. It's not. When you're wrong, you're wrong. I like, know, but he can do whatever he wants to. Just not in our class. I just think it's wrong. Just wrong. Don't eat raw chicken. 165. Look, you're not going to die if you lick a raw chicken, but which people think (laughs) we're all going to, we're going to kill everybody with salmonella. Like get a fucking grip. But if you're eating 145 chicken over and over and over again, there's probably something wrong with your gut. Uh, Yeah. You know, it's, it's not good for you. Um, eight inch chef's knife. Well, I mean, I think you need a chef's knife. You need a chef's knife, even if your hands are tiny. And maybe that's an that would be an upgrade for some people because that's a that's a fairly large knife. Is that what we use? Is that yeah. 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 Don't be afraid of a big knife. Again, this needs to be an extension of your hand, like tongs. Right. Um, you can't use a little bitty paring knife to cut shit up. No, and people I don't care. over and over want to do that. My hands are small. I'm a little person. Yeah. I'm not. Obviously, you can see me. But yeah. that's what people tell us all the time. And it doesn't fucking matter. They scare me. Yeah. Well, you just use them more. Yeah, exactly. Practice, practice, practice. 
This one is a new one, uh, bread slicer. So a serrated, a serrated knife. I think that's important. I think it's a, really hard to slice a loaf of bread if you don't have a serrated knife. It is, and you you can cut tomatoes with them. Yeah, I like that too. So you can double double use. You don't have to buy a tomato knife. Yeah, and in a <laughs> yes, in love, a pinch. You're gonna love this. There's gonna be in a pinch. Um, when you're dealing with a plant that has a bunch of roots and you can't get the plant out, yeah, the fucking serrated knife in there to cut the roots really is the only way I can get it out. Wow. Do you have a particular knife that you use that? I should do that. Or you I just should have cut to. bread and then you cut roots on your plant. Yeah. Okay. But I wash it in between, <laughs> but I also don't, I don't often buy know. loaves of uncut bread. Yeah. Um, and if I buy a baguette, I just rip it off. Oh, well, see, that's when I, I use a bread knife for like ciabatta uh, uh, yeah. or focaccia baguette. Again, a paring knife. Yes, we agree yes, to paring knife. Agree, agree a paring knife is important. Okay. this one Not for every, I mean, that's the thing is that you need knives to suit the job. Correct. And not multiple. Obviously, you can use the same knife for a plant <laughs> and a piece of bread. <laughs> yes, there you go. But um, you don't need seven bread knives. You don't need six chef's knives. Like, you, you only have one fucking hand that you're using at, at a, a time. time. We are joined at the hip. Citrus juicer. <laughs> you know, we talked about this on the last one. It's like the handheld, like you put the citrus in, catches your seeds for you. I'm kind of leaning towards this. I kind of like this. Yeah, um, I can tell that you are like I am. It. Because yeah. for cocktails and stuff, it is a bitch if you're having to juice a bunch of fucking oranges for uh, margaritas. Yeah. <laughs> Did that happen recently? Mm, just saying. Yeah. A uh, bench scraper again is on this list. Um, would, you know, some of these though, I wouldn't necessarily call them an upgrade. Well, but some people don't think about these things well, and they are an upgrade. Maybe for, would be an upgrade. Yeah. But they're, and they're not expensive upgrades. They're not expensive. Yeah. Uh, Pre-seasoned cast iron pan. Do you have a cast iron pan? I have yet? several. Do cast you use them often? Mm, you know, I use them on occasion, but they're ones that my mom had. So they're really good cast iron pans, but they're really heavy. Really heavy. Really heavy. And I'm okay with that. It's just that it's not the first pan that I'm going to grab. Now, again, you say that, and, and again, I'm going to say, we've had people in class that are like, oh, I use my cast iron pan for everything. And like, I think that's great. They probably just keep it out on the stove mm -hmm. and they use it. And it's what you're used to. It's either what you grew up with or what you came accustomed to as, as a grown up cooking. Yeah. And that's, I think that's great too. Like, but what's the, I didn't grow up with that country cooking. So what's the purpose of a cast iron pan? Well, it holds heat really well. And you can put it in the oven. I assume you can do you almost, can almost anything. anything. With it's it. indestructible. You could hurt someone with it. Yeah. They are heavy. I do yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh shit. I'm just purchasing one. I didn't mean to, I hit the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you don't need to purchase wow. that. I can, uh, you can share mine. Okay. Thanks. A Japanese bee house salt box. Okay. I don't understand that. Okay. What is, I mean, I have a salt box. So I think this again is very, being very specific. I use a ramekin and have my salt in it. I think if you have a, I think having a dish, a bowl, a salt box, Where's yours? Is that yours? Yeah. Excuse me. That was that was given to me <laughs> when I attended the Thermidor workshop, um, but it it's great. I love it, and, and it has a little um, magnet, and so the lid just and this way also your salt does not get wet, mm. or the humidity doesn't get to it, so it doesn't clump up. Mm -hmm. Mine is very small, and it has an open. It's open all the time, but. It's so small that it doesn't get clumpy and because I have to change it out. I have to add more with so much, yeah. but it is important to have, don't use a shake, 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 shaker. Like you want to see your salt. Yeah. Like that's the purpose of this. Yeah. So that you can sprinkle and you can see the salt as it falls on your food. And salt is self-cleaning. So you can stick your hands in there. It's not a big deal. And it's just important to <sighs> salt is flavor. What brings out the flavor in food? You need it. You Seasoning. need to use more salt at home. Everybody. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the salt. Yes. Or the knives. Yeah. And then we're going to get, we're going to get comments about, I have high blood pressure. Then cook with salt. Don't add it later. Don't add it later. Yeah. That shit later is awful. That's what's going to get you. 
um, and cut out fucking cigarettes and that kind of shit then. Anyway, um, <laughs> digital food scale. I have one. Do you find it? It's handy. For what? Well, um, I've only ever used a digital food, food scale. I for use it for very particular things like, um, I, this is in, in, okay. So, okay. Uh, here's a specific situation. I was, I make a flourless chocolate cake on occasion and the num the, the chocolate has to be weighed because it doesn't give you cups. It doesn't give you anything. And it doesn't come in bags that are the same size as my recipe. So um, I weigh it. Okay. So I know exactly. And it, it's good. It is good for um, baking. Is that the only thing you weigh? No, there have been other things. I can't think of what else, but that's the one that always comes to mind is that I need to weigh the chocolate so I know exactly how much chocolate I'm using. Listen, it's been a long time, but the only thing I've ever used a digital food scale for is drugs. Well, I know there's that too, but I, and we have a really tiny one at the kitchen. That yeah. For all our for drugs. For all of our drugs. But um, no, mine is, mine's big. People get obsessed with this though for like diets and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if you're that kind of person, then, then do it. But it's again, one of those things. If you use it, great, get one. Yeah. But it is an upgrade. That's not, I, that's not an essential item in a it's kitchen not. for me. And not a cooking kitchen. No. Um, two piece cutting board set. So these just look like two plastic cutting boards. Cutting boards. Yeah. Cutting important. boards are important. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're not going to cut on your counter, so you have to have a cutting board. <laughs> <laughs> or you shouldn't cut on your counter. <laughs> I think some people might. Um, Candace and I both have a giant butcher block uh, cutting board that I think we use for almost everything. everything. Now, I do have a large plastic cutting board and I have a small polypropylene. Excuse me. Polypropylene cutting board. And They're heat a, resistant. Yeah. You and I have a small sands. one too. Yeah. And sometimes I'll get that small one out and put it on top of my wooden one for goopy meat mm -hmm. because it's wood. Um, and I don't want to put all that goopy meat on wood, you know, and then I can chop all my other shit up. But uh, you know what you clean a wood cutting board with? Yes. I do. Yes. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Do you? Lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, a lemon and kosher salt. Salt. And, and you scrub the shit out of it. And then you oil it. And then you rinse it and oil it. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, um, n do not use, well, I mean, you can use, deter not detergent, but dishwashing soap on it, but like Dawn, Dawn for dishes or whatever, but, um, the salt and the lemon together are very uh, it's sanitizing. A, it's a disinfectant. And, and then you don't get a bunch of, um, you know, all that soap residue and shit on your nice wooden cutting board. Yeah. And it smells good. It does smell good. It's kind of fun too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, stainless steel mixing bowls. Yeah. I a thousand percent agree with this. Yeah. Versus glass in particular. And just again, cheap ones like, but these come in so handy. Like I have some really cute, uh, salad bowls. I have glass bowls. I have China bowl, China bowls, China bowls. Um, and you know what? Half the time I make my fucking food in this and I leave it and then put it on the table. Yeah. Like I just leave it in these bowls. They're great for uh, tossing salad. Yeah. All kinds After of stuff. After you spun it in your salad <laughs> Natalia can't believe I use a salad. I still can't believe it, but it's okay. I also use it as a colander too. Mm -hmm. It's multi-use. It's multi-use. It's like multi-tasker. Uh, vacuum, ins steel vacuum insulated mug. I for your kitchen? What for? A spill proof travel, travel. I don't know. It's on the list. Well, that's it's of... for your traveling kitchen. Okay. If you want something to drink that needs to stay it hot. It needs to stay hot or very cold apparently. But no, I don't I, I don't get that. Pie pans. Pie pans. Pie pans again. Yeah. Well, again, if you if you bake pies, if you bake cornbread, um this next one should have been on the other list cuz I think this is a very I should have added it to my few things that I find very important, which if you don't know what those are, you need to listen to the other podcast. <laughs> um, squeeze bottles. Oh yeah. Squeeze those cheap. They're like eight bucks for a two pack. Okay. But wait, there are squeeze bottles and then there are squeeze bottles. Mm. 
tell us. It's if you can find preferably the squeeze bottles that have a very wide opening, then it's easier to put stuff in them. A lot of them have really tiny openings. Oh, yeah, no. No, no, yeah. no. Like the, you know, like. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, I know, but that's what those are. Yeah. The, you know, you'll find them uh, at a diner or something with ketchup or mustard in them, and, mm. they, and they have a little tiny opening. Mm -hmm. You need the big. And she doesn't mean the opening that you squeeze the product out of. She means no. the mouth of the bottle that you're adding that you stuff screw into. the lid back on. Yeah. yeah, so you can add a big chunk of garlic, or you can add, like, whatever you want. Sorry, I'm just going to fix my hair, everybody that's watching, because it's just so beautiful. <laughs> um, it's always fun. It's, uh, you know what, if you make your own barbecue sauce, um, if you make your own salad dressings, these are great throw everything in yeah. there shake it up shake throw it, up. it in the fridge and and you keep them forever and now i'm purchasing these as well okay amazon <laughs> fuck off 11 inch balloon whisk yeah you think that's important not a balloon whisk but a right you know a just whisk a whisk have a whisk i have a, i have a, a couple of whisks i have a very strange one i should have brought it i need to ask you it's got four small tight heads what's that for um, so it's like the stick and yeah. then it's like whisks, but it's like four, like a clover, like a four leaf clover. Okay. They're separate. Oh, you know what that's for oh. is to, um, it's to get into the corners uh -huh. of your pan <laughs> well, when I'm... you're whisking mm -hmm. so that you don't have like flour clumps or whatever mm -hmm. around the edges. That is for all the stuff I use for, the flour for all for. the, uh, yeah, all the things that she makes like that. A microplane. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we went we went through all that before. Microplane is the thing that they use on your feet to get the uh, the cheese off your feet. <laughs> don't use the same thing like I do with my plants. You definitely <laughs> got to have. That's yeah, definitely not sanitary. Yeah, no, that's not a multitasker for you. No, feet. just buy two. Yeah. Um, Please buy two of those. <laughs> that's so gross. Oh, that's but people gross. say it in class all the time. It's true. I mean, that's where you see these more often than not is yeah. when they're getting the cheese off your feet. Um, all of these things were under 40 bucks. I do Can agree. Can you believe that? Under with, $40. With most of these things. Um, and like we said before, look, just cause we're talking about it, maybe we use it. If you're not going to use it, don't fucking buy it. Or if you buy something and you don't use it, get rid of it. They need to have a salad spinner. <laughs> Salad spinners are great. If you've never used a salad spinner and you, I mean, you can use it for all different kinds of vegetables, not just lettuce. What but else it, do you spin in there? Well, I'll put like, if I'm going to purge cabbage, mm -hmm. I put cabbage in and then salt it. And oh, then, that's a good idea. Yeah. Cause it's all plastic. Yeah. Um, Does it go in the dishwasher? It can, okay. but I don't put it in the dishwasher. I know you don't. I hand wash it. I know. So, so salad spinner, salad spinner, I would add to that list and it's still under $40. Yeah. Still and you can get different sizes of them. Oh yeah. So you can get a little one if you want to. Yeah. Is there anything else that would be an upgrade that we haven't already talked about? Um, I think, you know, personally, I think the fine mesh, uh, strainer is an upgrade. I don't think that's essential. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to have one of those. But I think you need a, a colander yeah. and something finer, yeah, whatever that may be. Colander for like pasta, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. a fine mesh strainer for, um, you know, like straining. If you make pudding. Mm. All the pudding that All the make. pudding that you make. <laughs> it does. It, it uh, strains out all the little um, imperfections in your sauces and things like that. And you don't have to worry about, if you, if you worry about this sort of thing, but your gravy is lumpy. Mm. or your some sauce is lumpy so yeah. I, I, people get upset about that you we know like not. especially uh, we don't get upset but at thanksgiving lumpy gravy oh god ruin the whole dinner <laughs> i'll never come back <laughs> never never <laughs> never again, again. never, never coming, back. coming back to your house for a free thanksgiving dinner so all of these fun uh lists because i love lists she loves articles and lists. I love articles and lists. I get lots of newsletters. I curate them just for you. Um, but this is Serious Eats. Um, it's a really good newsletter to take if you want to up your cooking game. They also have lots of newsletters with tons of recipes. Also let us know, like, is there something that you can't live without in your kitchen? Um, is there, like I said before, tongs? I think the, the instant read. I can't live without tongs. I can't live without tongs or a high heat spatula mm -mm. or... A chef's knife. Yeah, definitely. A chef's Those are knife. three things that if I had to go to someone's house and cook, I would take with me. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, and I look for at other people's homes and they don't have them. Yeah. Cause they don't, people, people think tongs are for only for grilling. Yeah. And they're no, not, they're, they're for not. everything. They're, they, um, they really are an extension of your hand. They really are. So if you have something like that, that we haven't said in the last two episodes, email us, email us at Candace at the girl can cook school.com. Mm -hmm. And we will uh, add you to the podcast because we would like to know. And in the meantime, listen to us on Apple podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. We're everywhere, everywhere mm -hmm. and subscribe rate and review because that really helps us get better. Please do. It takes like two seconds. Just scroll down and fucking do it, please. Please, 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 please. So we're going to say stay fresh. Gear bags.